good to see you all here today. I'm glad to be in the house this morning. Amen. And thank God for the old rugged cross. Amen. Amen. Thank you, cousin. Remember that old hymn, At the Cross, At the Cross, where I first saw that. Amen. Aren't you thankful this morning that you saw the light? Amen. Boy, it just keeps ringing up. I once was lost in sin. Jesus took me in. Amen. That friend sticks closer than a brother. Did y'all bring a Bible with you this morning? I want to talk about assurance this morning. You know, you need, not just spiritually, but in the world, you know, anything you're involved in, you like a little assurance. You know, you like to feel good about what you're involved in. You don't like to be in the dark. I, I don't know a lot of people say, I'm just tickled pink being in the dark. At least I know better. You like to know what's going on. You like to be informed. You like to uh, know what you can expect or what you shouldn't expect or whatever the case. But it's a, it's about assurance in relationships, in business deals, whatever. But it ties right over into our spiritual life. Because there's a lot about the natural. We don't have any assurance. You know, we say, oh, I got this job, I got that job. We don't have any guarantees. People file bankruptcy all the time. You, you can work somewhere for uh, 20 years and then just go in, hey, we're going to shut the doors next week. There, there's, there's nothing in this world that you can count on. That's just the truth. We must put our faith in God. Have faith in God. That's our only assurance. That's our only solid foundation. And, and I want to share with you that God wants us as believers to walk around full of assurance. Amen. Amen. When we walk around without that, that's not his lacking. That would be some lacking on our part. Mm -hmm. And when we get in this word, all thank God for the word. You know. And, it, and things just make more and more sense to me every day. But if, if I was the enemy... I would just love to keep Christians out of their Bibles because I can keep them confused. I can keep them discouraged. I can keep them in a place where they'll never just hook up and, uh, you know what I mean, begin to thrive the way God wants us to just because of a lack of the word. Assurance. Y'all with me this morning? Turn to 1 Corinthians. We're going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to be in 1 John. Bunch of You're not really going to jump around that much just within a book, you know, where, but 1 Corinthians will start. We talk about assurance. Uh, you know, the world views us, and I'll read that verse again into a little bit more, but quit, quit worrying about fitting in this world. Quit worrying about how they look at you or what they think about you. They're talking about you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Long time ago, I was in a dark period of my life. When I say dark, I don't mean I was out and singing, acting all crazy, but it was just, wasn't hearing much. and It was just a weird time in my spiritual life. But God spoke something to me that wasn't in the Bible that I run across, but he said, uh, don't mistake friendliness for friendship. And that was just one of my, maybe one of my weaknesses, I don't know, but if somebody was friendly to me, you know, regular, I kind of considered them a friend. But you can be, you can get hurt that way is what I'm talking about. There's people that'll be polite to you and, you know, passing, and as soon as you get around the corner, they're talking about you. And, and I just want to tell you that the world belongs to the enemy of our soul, the prince and the power of the air. This is scripture. This, uh, you see, your flesh is not going to uh, 
go to glory. That's not what's being saved. Your flesh is corruptible, and there has to be a change. And, and we, we, we focus so much, I, I think, on stuff that it's just not going to happen. Your flesh is not going to get saved. It's your eternal part that's going to be saved. And we're stuck with this, you know, what you call this earthen vessel until the day we die. But it will give us trouble. And this world's going to give us trouble. And, and, and all the problems in this world, they're going to continue to be. The world's going to be dark. The world's going to be full of sin. And the world looks at the church like they're crazy. So just, that's it. Just get used to it. You heard, it's the nature of the beast. That's just how it is. And that's just something we're going to have to learn to deal with. Anytime you make a choice, you say, I'm, I'm going to take a stance and this is my view. There will be repercussions. Right or wrong, I don't care. Not everybody's going to be on board with you. Not everybody's going to like you. You know, people say, I just can't stand so and so. Uh, that's just how it's going to be. But whenever you say, I'm going to get on the Lord's side, I'm going to, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There will be repercussions for that, and the world's going to look at you like you're crazy. Let's, let's read a verse. But we got assurance. That's why we get this assurance. Everything has price. Y'all with me? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 18. I've shared this verse before. I love this verse of scripture. For the preaching of the cross. If there's anything that churches better hang on to, if they're going to stay biblical churches, it must be the preaching of the cross. If you're getting crowds or groups or what appears to be a power, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, many times we misjudge and we think something's more than it should be. Uh, it's got to be about the preaching of the cross. Why is this so effective? Why you can you can begin to do something here different than what we're doing? I promise you, you can double this crowd in a month, but it may not be the preaching of the cross. We can start giving something away, or we can start. Uh, you know, just getting crazy or we might start playing a little bingo. I don't know. You could double this crowd pretty quick. Uh, you could get to where they're standing there on me pretty quick. But if, if you're not doing the preaching of the cross, you've got away from God. Amen. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Do you think there's some people out there that are perishing? Now, these people that are perishing are looking at us, the church, like we're crazy, like we're foolish. They feel very good. They feel very confident. They, they look at you and almost have a snicker. Really? Get over it. It's, when it don't let things become so personal that they get in your head and they can affect your decisions. They, they can affect a lot of your choices, a lot of your actions. Here's the thing about it. There are many, many, many out there that are perishing. You judge it? No, I'm reading the Bible this morning. And there's things that are going to be. <coughs> but these that are perishing are looking at the church like that's foolish. Like that's unprofitable. Like that's a waste of time. I mean, you think about it. Uh, many churches are empty today. Many people have made a decision. I'm not going to live for God. I'm not going to darken the door of the church. I'm going to do my own thing. They look at all this as foolishness. Get used to it. Y'all with me? Amen. <coughs> but unto us, that's us. Unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. Is that what your Bible says? There's some saved people, and there's some people that are perishing. There's nothing else. Well, I'm kind of hung in the middle. No, you're not either. You either are or you're not. It's, it's real simple. 
Well, I'm close, brother. No, you're not. You're either in or you're out. Y'all with me? <clears throat> you're this group that is perishing and looking at everybody uh, that's saved as though that's foolishness. You know, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. Or you're either in that group where, no, that's the power of God. And I want you to see something that when we will get serious, when we will get dedicated to the preaching of the cross and get hungry for the preaching of the cross, in the midst of that, we will find that that is the power of God. And we will know this. We have assurance that we know we are saved. Amen. Boy, there's a bad storm coming. Or let's just say not so much weather, but uh, economy. There's a bad storm coming. Matter of fact, it's money's going to get so tight and we're, we don't even know how we're going to eat. We don't know how we're going to pay the black bill, this, that, and the other. That, that, that storm begins to work on you and, and you realize, I need to be rescued. I need to be saved. And you know, uh, that, that can relate to people because they've dealt with something at some point in their life wondering how they're going to do this or how they're going to pay that. But I, I want to share something a lot more serious than that because there is a real place called hell that people are going to spend eternity in if they reject Jesus Christ. If they look at the preaching of the cross as foolishness, if they look at the, the church as a foolish thing and they continue to go about life and do their own thing and, and they're their own God, they call their own shots, they will one day be in a place called hell. But we have assurance this morning, church, that because we made a decision to accept Christ as our personal Savior, I am part of that group that's called redeemed. I am part of that group that is called saved. And I'm not looking at none of this as foolishness. I'm looking at this as the power of God. There's the difference. So why do I want to fit in? And I, I'm guilty as anybody. Trying to fit in. Trying to find my place. Trying not to make waves. You know what I'm talking about. And we wonder why. You know, it just seems like a... You know how you, when you when you pet a, a dog, the hair goes one way, and you just seem like, man, I'm always stuck this way. Quit trying to fit in with this cesspool of a world that's not our home. I'm just passing through. I said, I'm just passing through. I'm headed for a better place. And these that are on the other side are not heading to a better place. All aboard. You know, they're calling. All aboard. Everybody can get in. Everybody has opportunity. But there's those that are going to reject. There's those that are going to continue to call this foolishness. But I'm going to live for God. Amen. Assurance. Do you know that you're saved? Over the years, I've seen people just point blank ask, are you a Christian? I've seen people bold about that in their witnessing. Are you saved? Are you a Christian? That shouldn't offend us. You know, here I am, been preaching a long time, been in church, whatever the case is. And if somebody tomorrow, I meet mean for the first time, let's just say I met Leon for the first time and we was talking. He said, are you a Christian? I've seen, I've seen Christians get offended and blow up. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? That, that ought to be like, oh, yes, uh, glad to be. Thank you for asking, you know. Uh, that makes his job easier when he's led by the Spirit next time. But uh, we should never, ever get offended because someone were to ask us if we're a Christian. We ought to begin to rejoice one with another. We found a brother or sister in Christ, you know, and, and we got something to relate to. The day we live in, we're trying to be too worldly. We're trying to fit in. Somewhere we don't belong. Is this making sense? Because it's going to make it a whole lot tougher on you. To find your true place. To find your true assignment. You know we all got an assignment. 
I've, I've, you know, I've got some assignments, and I know my wife's got some assignments, and we never really thought we'd be dealing with them, but uh, I said, you know what, we just, that, we got some assignments. God's given us some assignments, and we need to be faithful. We don't need to try to get out of them. We don't need to try to justify doing something else. But to find your place, to, to do what God has assigned you to do, is going to be a whole lot easier if you're not trying to fit this world. Y'all with me? Amen. And the more assurance you got, you know what I mean. See, when you're not assured, you'll have doubts. If you're about, if you if you're a, a, a young woman, you know, and you're thinking about getting uh, in a relationship, and we could possibly be married, and, but you got some doubts, and there's a lack of assurance there. It would, it would, it would make you uh, hesitant. And there's times we're hesitant with God, and He's ready to go. But we're hesitant with God because we lack assurance. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Turn to First John. We're talking about what you are. <clears throat> you are. Saved. Can't key on that enough. Boy, I just, uh, I ain't got much to look forward to, you know, and this and that. And it's easy to sit around and do that, isn't it? Are you saved? Because when you have assurance of your salvation, you got a lot to rejoice about. 1 John chapter 2. Look at verse 12. <clears throat> he said, I write unto you, little children. Does that bother you to be called a little child? It don't bother me. I'm pretty easy to get along with. <clears throat> you know, I was pretty easy to get along with before I got saved. Some folks are easy to get along with. No, no, no. He said, I write unto you, Little children, that's what we are. We are dependent upon God. Amen. Children are dependent upon parents. Yes. And we should always remain in that state, in that condition. We need you, God. Amen? Amen. He said, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. Huh? Because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Wow. You ever get yourself in a mess? I have. Don't you feel good when it's over? Boy, I got myself in a predicament. Then when it's over, you're like, man, peace. You know, Let's just say you were looking at you're about to go to jail for many, many years. I don't think I'd want to do that. I don't want to go to prison for the next 20 years. That's a long time, isn't it? I said on the news the other day oh, this guy's been in there 60 years. He's 81, let him out. It's a long time. But if you were facing a situation like that, and then all of a sudden they said, oh, don't worry about that anymore. We're throwing this all out. You're free to go. Wouldn't you be like, whew, you feel good. You see what I'm talking about? Well, when, when, when you get that revelation, the wages of sin is death. There's no way out. And the death we're talking about is, is, is worse than any kind of natural death. You know, there's some terrible deaths you can die of. There's some ways you can die that are painful, that, that are, uh, you, you know, you, you, you know, your body goes down and just deteriorates. And, uh, you know, you may go from being a, a strong, healthy man to he didn't even weigh 
100 pounds when he passed. You know, there, there's that way, and then there's uh, tragedies that, that happen quick, but you, you, go, you go through a lot, you know, during that death. But what I'm talking about is so much worse when you die in your sin. And when you enter into eternity and you find out that I'm doomed to a devil's hell for eternity where the fire is never quenched, where there's no relief, where there's no breaks. When you enter into that, there you will always be. And when you get this revelation, my sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. The wages of sin is death. So the only thing that could bring this death upon you is your sin. And then when you find out that through that rugged cross we were just singing about, that I have been forgiven, that's been wiped away, that's been taken away, and I now can have assurance. Y'all see what I mean? That's not against me. Now you know what? People get convinced on a daily basis. Church folks, you're not good enough. Huh? Who do you think you are? The world loves it. Preacher. Yeah. You call yourself a preacher. Who? You're trying to fit in this world again. You're letting them mold you. They think that's all foolish. But when it's right, they'll turn it around and try to use it on you. Because the enemy wants to discourage you and take away your assurance. And what you got to do is, you got to know that you are forgiven. I am saved. I am forgiven. That makes me or causes me or helps me to live for God. I just give up. That's what people do to commit suicide. Hmm? Yes. People do it all the time. They take their own <clears throat> life because they have been painted a picture and they have been convinced it's not worth living. I will just end it. It will be better when I'm gone. And they take their life. And the church, I'm talking to believers. He's going to come against you. Satan, he's going to come against you. He's going to paint this picture. And if he can get you to believe it, you'll end your spiritual life. It's not worth living for God. What convinced you of that? I lost my assurance. You see how important this is I'm talking about? And there's only one way you're going to keep the church. We're going to have to stay true to this word. Hmm? Yeah. When you break ties with God's word, and there's a lot of ways, you know, you, yeah, we read, we, we, what you listen to, type of music you listen to, uh, what kind of words you listen to. We're not just here to make the donuts. You know, we're here to receive God's word. Amen. Because we want to keep and maintain our assurance. Y'all still with me? When you break ties with the Word, you're on the way out. You're on the way out. You know, you get in, there's been times I felt like I was in pretty good shape. And you know how you got there. You were faithful to an exercise routine. And then you quit. But immediately, you're still in good shape. You know, it takes a little time till you'll say, you know, uh, I used to be able to 
but I, I can't now. Why? Because you broke ties with that routine. And I'm, I'm, I'm wanting you to see something right now. There's things that we desire, there's things that we want. Let's just talk about this assurance right here. <clears throat> You're going to have to be faithful to a routine to possess certain things. Amen. He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. But if you want to possess those keys and you want to recognize those keys and use those keys correctly, if you're in a hurry, it's a, it will be good. We're in a hurry. We need to hurry up and unlock that door and get in. I don't have time to go through 34 keys. You know, the bad guy's coming and we want to get in. You know what I'm talking about? And there's, there's, I'm telling you, there's a place in God where he wants to take you. But you, we have, you have to be faithful to spiritual routines in order to flow. I've said it before. The Holy Ghost is smooth. Hmm? It is. I'm going to tell you right now. You get, you get somewhere where the Spirit of God is flowing. And the Spirit of God, the anointing is moving. And you're going to find smoothness. Think about that. And we need to really look at ourselves and say, how's my faithfulness to God's routine? Because I promise you, he's got one for you. You, you don't have to do it. He's not going to make you do anything. But I'm going to tell you right now, it'll make a difference. When you need assurance, It'll be there. Y'all with me? Amen. Most of us went to school, didn't we? I didn't like school. Who enjoyed school? I went. Let me tell you what kept me going to school. My mama told me, she said, if you quit school, you quit everything. I just believed that, Leon. I thought, if I quit this, Leon, I'll quit everything. And I just knew I don't want to be a quitter. Amen. And I make myself go to school. Yes. But I did not enjoy it. <laughs> and uh, I wish now I'd pay a little more attention. I wish now I'd read a little more. But knowledge is very, very important. Amen. Don't ever stop pursuing knowledge. It, I, I'm not just talking about Bible. I'm talking about it, anything. Always be eating. Always be bringing in. Don't sit around idle. Don't, don't sit around just, oh, I'm just going to do nothing today. I'm just, I, I haven't done this, but I've seen the TV, you know, programs. And if you so desire, you can get up and watch court. All day long. It's on the whole day. And, and I thought, there's probably people just get up and watch court all day. But if you would get up and do something that's feeding you, that's putting something in you, that'll change you. It matters what you know. When problems arise, you know how you deal with them? My knowledge. See, there's some people, oh my gosh, look. They're at their wit's end. Look at this problem. And this other person walks up and they're like, oh, that ain't nothing. You just do this, this, this. Oh, thank you. Oh, what was the difference? The one that fixed the problem had knowledge. One that fell apart. Probably been watching court all day. You see what I'm talking about? You need to be challenged. Wherever you're at in your life, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you're doing, if you're not being challenged on a daily basis, you're not growing. I'm not going to tell you that challenges are fun, but I'm going to tell you that you look at the end of somebody's life, who avoided challenges 
and someone who embraced challenges, you will see two distinctly different people. Well, you're just better off. Why is that? It wasn't because they hit the lottery. It's because of what they knew. You see what I'm talking about? And when it comes to God, when it, if you don't have assurance, you're not going to make it. I'm telling you right now. If you don't have faith, you're not going to make it. The just shall live by faith. But now when we try to fit in this world, we're going to live by something else. That's what's going on today. Y'all still love me? Yeah. Is that in the Bible that says, uh, do unto others as you have him do unto you? Isn't that it? That's advice. But many people don't live by it. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. When you're approached or spoken to or whatever, you know what you like. You, you, you know, boy, that wasn't very nice. It's easy. It hurts. But how are we doing other folks? We're the church. We got the love of God. We're talking in tongues, full of the Holy Ghost. What are we hurting people for? You know? Uh, we need to be patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is gentle. And when we don't display these features, these characteristics, that's not God. You see what I'm talking about? Now from the world, I expect crazy. Okay? I don't expect to walk up. Oh, that, that rattlesnake's a Christian. Quit being silly. That's a rattlesnake. And he's going to bite you. You know, you know, that's not changing. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. And the church ought to be full of love. And the church ought to be treating people the way they want to be treated. I just want to share that. Let me read a verse. First John chapter 3, verse 14. We get assurance from this. See, there's things that there was a time in my life I had habits and addictions and, and bondage and I hated it and I wanted it out but I couldn't. Y'all ever been there? And I give my life to Jesus Christ and he set me free. And all of a sudden I'm not drinking. You know? All of a sudden I'm not cussing. All of a sudden <clears throat> I'm not lighting cigarettes anymore. People do what they want, but I'm just telling you, this is what happened to me, okay? I'm glad I got the kind of salvation that took it all. And, you know, well, I'm getting sidetracked, but I got to keep going here. I quit smoking marijuana. This seems like so long ago, but I really did. And then when I added all that stuff up, because see, I used to, I, I always worked. I ain't never been lazy. But I used to work, and I, I'd get my cigarettes for the week. I'd get my marijuana for the week, and I'd, I'd try to get some beer and stuff for the week and put up. And when I got saved, it was cheaper to pay tithes than it was to do all that other stuff. Should I quit meddling or uh, go back to my sermon? I'm just saying it's always been easy for me. And I'm not saying I'm trying to buy God, but I just read the truth of the word and I believed it to be true. And I thought, well, you know what? Why not? He said, prove me. He said, try me. So I did. And it's worked out great ever since. And it's actually been cheaper than all this other stuff I used to find a way to do. But now once we get converted, oh, we can't afford that. Y'all still got to love me. I'm telling my testimony, okay? I'm just talking about me. I'm not talking about you. 
That is the truth. God is good. First John chapter 3 verse 14. Let me read that. He said we know. Remember I said knowledge is what you know. And it brings assurance. I know I pass from death unto life. How you know you're saved? How you know you're uh, where you should be? He said well we know we pass from death unto life. Because we love the brethren. Huh? See, there was things I used to be involved in that I couldn't get out of. Oh, I want to do right. Oh, I want to quit that. But when he got a hold of me, it happened. And when he gets a hold of you, that won't just happen, but you will begin to genuinely love other people that, that were seemed unlovable before. And we need to be on guard, church, because that old man... He, he's, uh, he's dead and he's gone and old things pass away. But I'm telling you something. If you don't, you know, I talked about being faithful to God's routine. If we don't watch it, we lose our assurance. And this old man wants to resurrect and come back. And you'll be just like you were before you knew him. Y'all with me? Amen. How do you know? How's your love doing? How are you treating people? Hey, I got to slap myself around. I'm preaching to myself now. I'm going to go over here and whoop myself a little bit. Y'all think I'm crazy. But it's the truth. A good indicator of where you're at. We know we pass from death into life. What? Because we love the bread. If you love somebody, you're not, you're not sitting there killing them with your tongue. Hmm? We know we pass from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. So I can sit here and say all kinds of stuff. I'm this, I'm that. 